How is it that we find ourselves surrounded by such complexity, such elegance? The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, are all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. Hi, you're listening to DNA Today, a podcast and radio show where we discover new advances in the world of genetics. From genetic technology like CRISPR to rare diseases to new research, we have you covered. For a decade, DNA Today has brought you the voices of leaders in genetics. I'm Kira Deneen. I'm a certified genetic counselor and your host. VizGen is dedicated to pioneering the next generation of genomics, providing tools that demonstrate the possibilities of in-situ single-cell spatial genomics. These tools are enabling researchers to gain insight into the biological systems that govern human health and disease. Stay tuned for our full episode with VizGen, where we explore single-cell spatial genomics. Get a sneak peek by visiting their website at vizgen.com. That's V-I-Z-G-E-N.com. VizGen, leaders in spatially resolved single-cell transcriptomics. Mitera Harness is the latest technology to empower you along your family-forming journey. Mitera informs you about your genetic and other pregnancy-related risks and options through at-home genetic testing. Mitera's process is overseen by maternal fetal medicine specialists, doctors who are experts in pregnancy complications. So when you request a kit, Mitera provider will place your order. Depending on your insurance coverage, you may have your testing cost covered. Mitera also provides virtual genetic counseling to make sure that you understand the test and your results. My 23 pairs carrier screening is currently on the way, and I'm excited to share my experience with you during our full episode interview with Mitera. Stay tuned for this episode on DNA Today. The other test they offer is called Peaches and Me, which is a non-invasive prenatal screening for pregnant people to learn for the chance their baby to have chromosomal conditions like Down syndrome and the sex of their baby. Buy your own kits at MiteraGenetics.com and use code DNA today for 10% off. That's M-I-T-E-R-A Genetics.com. Mitera. Predict, prevent, prepare. Did you know Perkin-Elmer Genomics was one of the first laboratories to offer whole genome sequencing on a clinical basis? Whole genome sequencing can maximize clinical diagnostic yield for patients. With a turnaround time of six weeks, Perkin-Elmer's whole genome sequencing test is designed to provide access to additional valuable information compared to an exome. Perkin-Elmer Genomics provides one of the world's most comprehensive programs for detecting clinically significant genomic changes. Perkin-Elmer Genomics delivers knowledge that can empower health. Perkin-Elmer is a global leader committed to innovating for a healthier world. Join their mission at PerkinElmerGenomics.com. And also, stay tuned for our interview with Perkin-Elmer, where we're going to be exploring the power of whole genome sequencing. I'll also tease that my guest for this episode is a world-renowned geneticist, so you are not going to want to miss this one. But while you wait for the episode, head over to PerkinElmerGenomics.com to start discovering all Perkin-Elmer has to offer. I am ecstatic to introduce our guest, Lauren Potter, who you might know as Becky Jackson from the TV show Glee. She was in all six seasons playing a character who, like her, has Down syndrome. On top of being a fabulous actress, she is a fierce advocate. President Obama appointed her to the President's Committee for People with Intellectual Disabilities. She has advocated with AbilityPath, Best Buddies International, the National Down Syndrome Society, the American Association of People with Disabilities, and Special Olympics. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us on DNA today. It is an honor to have you on the podcast and perfect timing with World Down Syndrome Day on March 21st. So welcome, Lauren. Why, thank you so much, Kara. This is, I have to say, I'm very excited because I'm a Gleek. Um, Glee started at least airing. You guys probably, you know, filmed it beforehand. But it started airing in 2009 when I was a freshman in high school. So I very much grew up, grew up with Glee. Um, but before we get into your exciting career, can you share with our listeners what Down syndrome is if they haven't heard of it before? Well, Kara, um, thank you for inviting me, um, by the way, um, to be with you and on the podcast. And I'm so very excited. And I don't know who's you... more excited. It's probably <laughs> me because I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> you 
thank you for hosting such an important discussion. First, Tao Sejum is an exciting journey in life, but it gives me a look at life that not many people got, you know, Tao Sejum has given me an extra chromosome, but it also has given me a lot of joy. For a second, a lot of people think it's a disability, but I think it's just different. It's a way to look at, at life and to love life. And I, I absolutely love it. It sounds like it's a very much a part of who you are as a, as a person. What was it like growing up with Down syndrome? Can you, you know, tell me and, and our audience a little bit about your childhood? Well, like I said, Kara, Down syndrome gives me an extra chromosome. That extra little piece of material in, in my cells means that I have work harder and longer <laughs> to do most people's do quickly. For example, um, it it really took me two years um, to learn how, how to walk and but I did learn how to read when I was by your soul and thank goodness my family taught me to sign language. That was amazing. Um, it was really impressive. But I, when I was an infant, because talking um, took years before people outside of my family could understand me and, and understand what I'm saying. Yeah, that can definitely be a challenge because I think with any children, their parents usually get what they're saying and they're, and they're interpreting <laughs> for other people, right? I'm sure your mom has had situations with that. And my mom has too, right? When I was a little kid, like, oh, I know exactly what she's talking about. And other people are like, what is she saying? So, you know, definitely, as you said, you know, differences as you highlighted. And I really like how you explain that is, you know, the way that you view Down syndrome is not a disability, but that it's different and it makes you unique. But some people with Down syndrome do have a lot of problems with their heart or with their stomachs, um, perhaps, and when they when they were born. But it was pre- I was pretty healthy because my my mom took really good care of me. Um, I mean, took care of me and herself when she was pregnant with me. Of course. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I can tell that, you know, your mom loves you so much and supports you um, in your career with everything. Um, and I heard that you started dancing before you started walking. So you're saying that, you know, it took you a little longer to walk than other people. Um, but that didn't stop you. You started dancing before you were walking. When did you start dreaming? Like, I think I want to become an actress. Like, when did you start thinking about that? Was it from a really young age? Well, yes, Kyla, it was a blast to dance and perform for audiences, a lot of audiences. I, I can remember my first recital of my dance class when I was all over. They called me, you know, on the back of the stage <laughs> to take, so I took a bow and when I heard the applause, I was in heaven. <laughs> I knew knew that that I wanted to be a dancer and an and an actress. You know, you know at the same time. And so, to answer to your question, Kyla, I think it, I was about four years old when I was started to dream of being an actress, and it, it bite me. Hard. <laughs> it really bite me. Wow, that is so young. I did not know what I wanted to be at four. I think back then I wanted to be like a dentist, which did not end up happening. Um, so, I mean, the role of Glee in, you know, pay, playing Becky Jackson and Glee, that is such a good, like, you know, putting together of being an actress and dancing. So 
tell me about auditioning for Glee. I know we're going back in time. I don't know if that was like 2007, 2008, I want to guess. But what was the experience like auditioning? Well, my mom got a call from a friend with ties to Hollywood. Um, the woman um, named Gail Williamson told us that they were looking for a, a spunky and sassy girl who played. So you're like, team. check, check. I'm spunky. I'm sassy. <laughs> <laughs> in, in high school, um, when the Kathy director was looking for a girl who is smart, cute, and witty, 13 other girls and a whole full tie wow. out for the same part. But Ryan Murphy, the producer of Glee, gave me a chance. And I was so happy. I was wow. so really, really happy about it. So how do you remember how soon you found out that you'd got the role? Like, was it a long time? Was it like months or was it only a few days? Um, it was weeks. Weeks. Wow. I don't know if that's long or short. <laughs> I don't know about the industry too much. <laughs> that feels like a long time to wait to be like, am I going to get this role? That's that's really, really exciting. Wow. And Ryan Murphy is such a rock star. I mean, American Horror Story, <laughs> Glee, just so many things. Um, so I know we talked a little bit about your childhood. Um, and in high school, I heard you didn't meet the cheerleading squad, but then obviously in Glee, you're like the most popular cheerio uh, you know on the cheerleading squad how did that feel to play someone that had such a prominent role and become a celebrity cheerleader well um to tell you the truth kyra i was yeah. devastated yeah when they didn't pick me to be a cheerleader in my high school i tried out and i worked really really hard on it and they even, they don't even let me to believe that it was, that I was going to be picked. That um, must have been really hard. Yeah, it, it's really hard, but unfortunately, I, I think they did pick me because I don't look like the other girls or I'm not popular enough and I'm not cool. And I didn't become a palm queen at all. And it was really hard and I I loved it. And when you know when my family and my parents celebrated um, you know, for me to get to get in, um actually um what happened was that we we were looking at you know my mom's laptop and um we were gonna like you know cross our fingers um and hopefully we get it and i get in uh, but sadly in my middle school I, I tried out in middle school and i passed out oh. and and in the high school my coach told me that um, I failed, and um, and kind of felt like my dreams was crushed, and I kind of felt I was hurt. It's something you and really I, wanted to be a cheerleader and and be part of that group. And as you said, you love performing. So you know, being a cheerleader, cheerleaders are constantly right. performing. And thank God that. Um, I, I, uh, you know, when I didn't get in for my high school either, um, I got to be in it on Glee. Yeah. I was a cheerleader, the, you know, sassy, um, spark, sparky little Becky. Um, I got to be a cheerleader on Glee. I'm like, yeah. yeah. You're one of the most when famous started, cheerleaders like, in the world. In the I mean, let's be real, right? You're one of the most famous cheerleaders. Yeah, I I felt so relieved, really. 
I was so excited when they picked me and Toast and me to be the spunky little cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yeah, and and a big part of your role on Glee was working very closely with Jane Lynch. Um, so she, for those that are kind of thinking back to Glee, she plays uh, Sue Sylvester, um, so the head of the Cheerios, the the cheerleading squad. What was it like to work with Jane? Well, Jane is a wonderful and kind person, and and she's so down to earth, um, whom I really love, and where I will always love her forever. And but she's not only the funniest person on earth. She's she hilarious. Me- <laughs> At least in the show. I mean, you're talking about actually knowing her, but I mean, some of her lines, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> And she gives me the warmest hug than anyone in the universe, in the world. <laughs> yeah. I was working with Jake Lynch. It was a ton of fun. And she also taught me some important acting skills. What did she teach you? Um, She teach me, like, you know, advice. Um, about, she was a patient with me. And she spoke with me with respect and care. My mom um, can still hear from her now. Wow. And and then I always text her on her birthday. Aw. So you guys have a pretty good relationship then. You're pretty close. <laughs> we were this close. We were like... Yeah, because most of your scenes on Glee, it's you two. Like, obviously, you're in a lot of scenes in the show. You're in all six seasons. But a lot of the scenes where you have a lot of lines, it's with her. And it's the two of you being, like, partners. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I think of one scene um, where they're in, like, the principal's office. Right. And... I don't, I don't remember what it was, but Becky, the character that you play, like got mad at something. You, you know what I'm going to say and flipped over like the xylophone or something. I feel like that's the scene that is like all over YouTube. When she gets angry at something, she flips over the xylophone, like in the hallway. Uh, do you remember filming that scene? Um, I think so. Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Really. Yeah. Cause there's just so many. <laughs> Has DNA testing turned your life upside down? Genetic counseling can help. Brian Kirkpatrick is the founder of Watershed DNA, where she offers her years of expertise to help people process the emotions and family dynamics around genetic test results. For people seeking DNA testing, Brian can help people choose the right DNA test. For those that have already done testing, she can review genetic results. Brian guides people uncovering a situation of not parent expected, coaches those preparing to share a DNA discovery, and assists those attempting to search for biological family members to find the right path forward. Here's a fun bonus. Watershed DNA has their own podcast called DNA Clarity and Support Podcast. Listen in your favorite podcast player by searching DNA Clarity and Support Podcast. Or you can go directly to watershedDNA.com, where you can also book a consultation with Brianne and learn more about all the ways Watershed DNA can support you and your family. Again, that's watershedDNA.com. Perkin-Elmer Genomics is a global leader in genetic testing focusing on rare diseases, inherited disorders, newborn screening, and hereditary cancer. Testing services support the full continuum of care from preconception and prenatal to neonatal, pediatric, and adult. Testing options include sequencing for targeted genes, multiple genes, the whole exome or genome, and copy number variations. Using a simple saliva or blood sample, perkin Elmer Genomics answers complex genetic questions that can proactively inform patient care and end the diagnostic odyssey for families. Learn more at PerkinElmerGenomics.com. You also worked with Jane Lynch outside of Glee, um, and you did a public service am- announcement for Spread the Word to End the Word, which, which was a campaign about ending the R word. Can you tell people why it's so important that they don't use the R word and how that can affect people like yourself and other people in the Down syndrome community? Well, to just to let people know how the R word is what people used to say about people like me, like, 
all the other words that labels and insults others, like calling someone retarded, can only hurt them. It kills them. And it's my hope and my dreams that we can end the use of the all labels to describe people who are are different, the more we realize that that person is a person. Whether they have a disability, a different look, a different way to love people, or have less than two arms or two legs. We all have the same wants and needs, like the need to be respected and loved. And here's the thing, you can't judge people. You can't judge people by their looks, and you can't judge people who they are. And um, I learned a lesson that um, you shouldn't judge people by you know, by his cover. You can't judge people by his cover. And you know what? If you want to do that, you have to uh, have a good look and, and you know, have, you know, somebody to talk to. Don't, just don't choose words. Someone once taught me that you can, don't show words. W words are better than actions. You gotta show them actions better than words. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very, very powerful to hear from you. And I, I do see a big change in the last few years that I hear the R word less and less, which makes me really happy that I think people are learning and especially people that are our age, um, you know, that are like young millennials, you know, and I think Gen Z, like the kids younger mm -hmm. than us, like, I, I think that our generations are really not using the word as much and that's having an effect on older people too, that they're not using it as much. So hopefully, you know, that can continue. And, and thank you so much for being part of this campaign um, because I still hear people reference this campaign. So it's just awesome um, that you've been able to speak out and be such an amazing advocate. Um, another way that you're being an advocate is that I saw you speak uh, through a video at the 23rd annual Best Buddies uh, International Leadership Conference. Best Buddies is such a wonderful organization. Can you tell us a little bit more about Best Buddies? Sure. Um, Best Buddies is a wonderful uh, uh, organization yeah. that pairs people with disabilities, with peers without disabilities, it's it starts in middle school, middle schools, and keeps going until after college. They help, but find friends for people like me. It uh, jobs, pe jobs for people like me, and pl places to live, people like me. And I was honored to be an ambassador for the National Best Buddies Board of Directors. And I go to Indiana Bliss several times for the annual Best Buddies yeah. co Leadership Conference. I saw tons of kids and people who were excited to meet me, but were even more excited to have friendships with their buddies around the world. Yeah, the crowd like went crazy when you were on stage. There was, <laughs> you had a lot of fans in the audience. I um, have really. <laughs> um, and another um, thing that I saw you in was the short film that you starred in called The Guest Room. Um, so for those that maybe haven't seen The Guest Room yet, I watched it on Vimeo, so you can watch it for free. I don't know if there's other places where we can buy it, but can you tell our audience like what the film is about? Absolutely. The guest room is about a young woman with Down syndrome who becomes pregnant 
she is in love with a man with Down syndrome. And they argue and and they love and you know like and like a normal couple, you know. I was learning the experience. It was a learning experience about a couple with disability and how they can fall in love like anyone that I know. And they can also have problems like anyone. And yeah, I, and it was, it was I a really beautiful loved, film. Yeah, go I, ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> I really love the film because it shows a lot of people that being a person with a disability is the same as being a person without a disability. We all face the same challenges. It may look different from the outside, but on the inside, we all have struggles with who we are and how to be in relationship with others. Yeah, I think I think that's very well said. And and once I was looking more into the guest room after I enjoyed the film, I also saw that you were an executive producer, which is really cool. <laughs> so was that the first time you've been an executive producer, like doing something that is on like the other side of the camera that isn't acting? Yes. Wow. So that must have been a really cool experience to be an actor in the film and be an executive producer. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> and what do you like about being an actress? You've been in multiple, you know, films and movies and, you know, TV shows, obviously, with Glee. Um, what do you love about it? I really love being in front of a camera. I love having people to watch me yeah. <laughs> and see me play the part of the other person. It was so much fun to be someone else for a little bit while I love comedy roles like Lee um, and drunk history but don't worry I wasn't really actually drunk <laughs> you're just but that good also... of an actress so, you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I also love doing drama like Chicago Med a guest room I, I love working with other actors and actresses and the great awesome crew and be on set it is my dream come true wow so i feel like you just love acting we're gonna see you in a lot more in the future like i hope so i don't want you to quit acting because i want to keep watching everything that you're in i hope i don't want to quit absolutely Good. i Good. don't want to quit <laughs> Did you know there's a genetic counselor that specializes in offering care to those in the adoptee community? Brianne Kirkpatrick co-wrote the DNA Guide for Adoptees to provide a resource for those in the adoptee community who are utilizing DNA testing to find biological relatives or to seek out medical information. She also started Watershed DNA to offer personalized genetic counseling to directly support people in the aftermath of a surprise DNA discovery. You can hear Brianne share her insight from her book on episode 103 of DNA Today. Learn more at watersheddna.com, where you can also book your consult today with Brianne. Every pregnancy has a chance to have a genetic abnormality or complication. Meterra empowers you to make the most informed reproductive decisions through their at-home genetic tests without needing your doctor's order. These tests include non-invasive prenatal screening, Meterra's Peaches and Me, and carrier screening, Meterra's 23 pairs. Request your own kit at meterragenetics.com and use code DNA today for 10% off. That's M-I-T-E-R-A genetics.com. Mitera. Predict. Prevent. Prepare. The next generation of genomics is here. Introducing Merscope from VisGen. You can explore new dimensions through spatial contacts with Merscope. VisGen integrates MerFish technology with high-resolution imaging, fluidics, image processing, and automation to deliver complete end-to-end single-cell spatial genomics solution. The Merscope platform comes with everything your lab needs to get running. VisGen built their expertise into every component of the system, so you can easily obtain and analyze high-quality MRFish measurements. MRScope measures the expression of hundreds of genes across hundreds of thousands of cells. Its resolution ranges from the tissue scale all the way to the subcellular scale. This allows researchers to interact, analyze, and interpret the most complex data sets. 
Stay tuned for our interview with VisGen on DNA Today, where we explore single cell spatial genomics. Get a sneak peek by visiting the website at visgen.com. That's V I Z G E N.com. VisGen, leaders in spatially resolved single cell transcriptomics. So you're a role model for so many people. Um, I've just, you know, seen so much online of people just looking up to you. Um, can you share a couple fan interactions that you've had? I know we've kind of talked about some like best buddies. Um, you know, is there any that you've had that like stand out to you or that you're remembering right now? I would love to share actually. Um, I remember one time I was, I was shopping for groceries with my father. A woman came up to us and said to me, are you Lord Potter? <laughs> and of course, <laughs> I knew immediately um, what this was about. I knew she had seen me on Glee and probably recognized me. Yeah. But what was more important was that she took my hand and brought me to her grocery cart and introduced me to her son, her wonderful son, who was about five years old at the time and has Down syndrome too. And the mom was so excited to meet me, but to show her son that someone like him was famous and was living and working at exactly where she wanted to be. I also love it when parents with little kids and babies um, tell me that I give them hope for their baby's future. It, it just makes me cry. It makes yeah. me cry sometimes wow. really hard. It always excites me when I see and hear about people with disabilities who see Becky Jackson is an inspiration to work really hard and to work for their dreams to be wherever they wanted to be. Yeah, I think it's just so powerful because a lot of people don't know that people with Down syndrome can do so much. And I think it can just be such a great, you're such a great example of being an independent woman and achieving all your dreams. I mean, it's just, it's really, really cool. And I have to say, like, even as a student, um, when I was like learning about Down syndrome, a lot of our instructors would mention actresses and actors that have Down syndrome, including you and saying like, <laughs> Down syndrome, as we've talked about, is a spectrum disorder. And so some people have more challenges than others. And, you know, I think it's really cool that, you know, sometimes now when I'm talking to patients, um, I'll mention you and say, you know, <laughs> oh, have you heard of Down syndrome? Maybe they say no. I'm like, have you watched Glee? You know, <laughs> so I think it's just, it's really cool that everybody knows Glee. Um, and I think you just raise so much awareness for Down syndrome because of that. Um, do you have any advice for parents? Like when you met with this woman that she has the baby with Down syndrome, the five-year-old that you mentioned, is there any advice um, that you told her that you tell parents? Well, listen, to having a child with Down syndrome can at first be scary and confusing. The best advice that I can give it's so to treat a child with Down syndrome any differently than you would treat any other child. We know we have dreams. We make mistakes, but we sometimes get into trouble. But the best parents love their children, like I do. When my parents. When they are being good, and when they're having trouble being good. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's just like every kid, right? Like, we've all made mistakes. We all do things. And, you know, as you said, just being like every other kid, 
I think that's really, yeah. really good advice, Lauren. Yeah, definitely. Are there any resources that you recommend for people to check out? You know, we've mentioned films <laughs> you've been in. We mentioned Best Buddies, which is awesome. Um, is there anything else or are those the main resources that you would point people to? Um, sure. Check out your local Down Syndrome education. And don't forget Best Buddies and Special Olympics. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I realized I didn't ask you about Special Olympics. So you were an ambassador for the 2015 Special Olympics. And you won some medals for uh, competing and everything. What are your favorite sports? Thank you, Kyla. It was an honor to be a good ambassador for yeah. Special Olympics. It was especially honored to be on the World Down Summer Games celebration at the Los Angeles Coliseum. I I even got to meet Baby Wonder and so many abilities and, and so many awesome athletes. I also attended the 50th anniversary for the Special Olympics at the Social Field in Chicago. I, it was so uh, awesome and amazing, and I love Tim Shriver, and he's such an amazing guy, <laughs> and I really love streaming. Wow, that is awesome. Wow, you've just done so much in your career already, and you're young, so we have so <laughs> much to look forward to in your career. Um, before we end, is there... A favorite line you have from Glee or any line that you remember that you really liked? I mean, I know you have you have you have some that are pretty some pretty sassy lines, I have to say. <laughs> but are there any lines that you remember? If not, no no problem. Actually, yes. Um there was um my favorite one was, you know, um the the um episode um was when the one of one of the episodes was called Rocky Horror. Yes, the Rocky Horror Picture um, Show. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> just at meeting me, Sue Sylvester, and I was talking to Will Schuster, and I said, um, give me chocolate or I will cut you. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was such a good episode. That was in one of the earlier seasons, right? I think yeah, it was. It was earlier on. Who, who loves chocolate? Will <laughs> Right. Because we don't want people to say um, that, give me chocolate or I will cut it. <laughs> you don't want to cut it. No, I want to say it. So funny. Oh, my gosh. I have to say, you're you're so much like your character in the sense that, like, I feel like you have so much energy and positivity and spunkiness and sassiness. I just love it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge fan of you. And now I feel like even more so because we've gotten to know each other a little bit here. But I mean, she's pretty perky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Lauren, for for coming on the show. I mean, this is just—it's such an honor to have you on here. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me and educate my listeners about Down syndrome and your experience and your amazing acting and advocacy advocacy, advocacy career. You can tell I'm still really excited here. Um, but thank you so much. I want people to know that. They can follow Lauren Potter on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at the Lauren Potter. Did I get that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, anything else that you want to end with? Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for buying me here. Yeah, definitely, Lauren. You are welcome back anytime. Um, <laughs> it's just fabulous to be able to, to talk to you. Um, and happy World Down Syndrome Day coming up. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So we'll be we'll be posting all all about this episode um, and tagging you and everything uh, on social media for this. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. For more information about today's episode, visit dnapodcast.com, where you can also stream all episodes of the show. We encourage your questions, comments, guest pitches, and ideas. Send them all into info at dnapodcast.com. Search DNA Today on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, so you can connect with us there. And a favor, please rate and review the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. This truly helps us climb the charts and allow more genetic nerds like yourself to find the show. 
DNA Today is hosted and produced by myself, Kier Deneen. Our social media lead is Corinne Merlino. Our video lead is Amanda Andrioli. Thanks for listening and join us next time to discover new advances in the world of genetics. The genes of you and me, the genes of you and me, we're all made of DNA. We're all made of the same chemical DNA. DNA.